Call Me Carson is a popular YouTuber with over 3 million subscribers who rakes in millions of views per video. However, sadly, over the past few weeks, some allegations have come out about him sexting underage fans. Now, obviously, as just mentioned, the topic in this video might be distressing for some, so viewer discretion is advised. In this video, I will give you a quick rundown of the situation, but I do urge that you do look into these things yourselves to come up with your own opinions. As well as this, I will be discussing other people's responses, problems that I've seen arise from this situation, and just have a general discussion about the climate of the internet when this stuff came out. To give a quick rundown of the situation, two members of the Lunch Club, which is a group that Carson and some other YouTubers were in, featured on an episode of Drama Alert with Keemstar, where they accused Carson of sexting underage girls. Everybody was up in LA and he told most of them face to face, but he called me and I picked up the phone and he was basically like, I have to tell you something. And then he told me that he did underage girls and I think that he said that they were fans. And that was what I was told. It's only just turned 2021. And after this, some girls did come forward giving proof of messages that they had with Carson. Now, Carson did admit to this over Discord recently, as shown by this screen recording. I'm not into kids, but I did trade nudes with people under the age of 18, which is very bad. I was 19. That's all you need right there. That's Carson's profile. There you go. There's all the stuff for that. And then, if you go down to the very bottom, grooming pedophilia Carson situation this tweet he says this shit is absolutely disgusting I figure guys will be seeing this sooner or later but yeah absolutely gross messages confirming that this is true as of recording this video, he has not made a public statement on any of his platforms. Now, other members of the Lunch Club have come forward on their platforms and made statements or videos detailing reasons why they didn't speak up sooner. For example, Slimesicle said that he reported it to the authorities when he found out about it and cut all ties with Carson. Schlatt, however, made a video detailing that the situation had been significantly underplayed to him. He just tried to help his friend get out of a dark place and improve. I just want to say, like, I, I never condoned what had, what he had done. Um, I remember a call with, uh, with him and Josh where both of us basically said to him, like, dude, if this behavior continues, we're done. You know, our close friend had fucked up, but he was also in a very dangerous place and we felt like we had to be there for him, you know, and, and in doing that, we could give him the guidance and the company he needed to help him get out of this depressive state he was in and help him you know, help them grow and, and become a better person. For further clarification, I do heavily suggest watching the actual interview on Drama Alert, as well as Schlatt's video on the topic and reading the responses individually. Now, it is important to note that when these interactions took place, Carson was 19 or 20 and these girls were 17. Regardless of age of consent, where this girl was or where Carson was, and regardless of what you personally think about an age gap such as 19 and 17, it is against federal law to solicit, send, and receive nude images from minors. Minors being people under the age of 18. And as a lot of people on Twitter are very, very quick to point out, there are defences put in place so that people under the age of 18 that do this with each other, or when there are age gaps such as 17 and 19, will not get heavily charged. But regardless of how heavily you are charged for breaking a law, you've broken a law. I don't think you can really dispute that. And a lot of people are saying, well, state law law will overpower federal law. Federal law usually wins, okay? That is usually the case. Another common defense that I've seen is the existence of the Romeo and Juliet laws that would actually cover Carson in this situation. The Romeo and Juliet laws do not cover the exchanging of nude images. I guess morally, it's up to you to decide whether the age gap itself is problematic. And honestly, I don't think the age gap is the most concerning part in this situation. One of the biggest pieces of criticism that I've seen this situation face, other than, you know, the exchanging of under age nudity is the act that Carson has exploited this fan to creator relationship. In this particular situation, it is detailed that the girl started talking to Carson after she tweeted out to him, asking him to be her boyfriend, and he went straight to her DMs. It is insinuated that this girl was a stan or a fan of Carson. Therefore, there is a power imbalance put in place 
space between creator and fan. And because of this, this situation has been read as exploitive, it has been read as manipulative, some of the messages have been read as creepy and guilt tripping. But again, that is all down to what you think and you can read these screenshots yourself and decide that. And I also want to point out that yes, they are screenshots taken out of conversations that have been had. One thing that I will say though is regardless of whether Carson intended it or not, regardless of whether Carson was aware of it or not, and regardless of whether Carson intentionally exploited it or not, there is a power imbalance here. Fans put creators on pedestals. Is that the fault of the creator for simply existing and being successful? No, but it is something that exists and it's something that creators do need to be aware of. But to summarise the overall situation so far that we have is that the evidence suggests that there was an exchanging of nudes with an underage girl and there was an exploitation of fan to creator relationship here, regardless of whether it was intentional or not. Something that I find quite funny, not that this situation is funny at all, is that there have been people that have not only been upset with the situation but with how other people have approached and covered it. Now a lot of communities do find issue with people covering topics like this one. Some say it's insensitive to profit off of situations like this. However I just want to say if it is in the public domain it is gonna be commented on. I want to particularly note that Slimes Call himself said that this was not drama and that it was a crime and that is why he didn't address it publicly but rather went to the police when he first found out about it. I also want to note that the narrative of all of his friends seems to be that this was not a situation that they condoned at all but it was significantly underplayed to them. What a lot of people also miss is that the lunch club were under a contract and so breaching that contract can have some quite um, unfortunate consequences for them. It is easy to sit here and judge with hindsight and say that they should have done this or they should have done that but you are not in this situation. And it was definitely a difficult situation for everyone involved. However, now that the situation is out there, you obviously can't stop people talking about it. You can criticise them for doing so, but you can't stop them. The biggest argument that people usually use when it comes to talking about this stuff, whether it be on Twitter, or on YouTube, or anything else, is that the act that they're raising awareness by talking about it. The more that people document this stuff, the more likely that more people will see it. So when these things are handled without bias, and they are handled especially especially sensitively when it comes to things like allegations, then your problem is more down to your opinion around the morality of talking about such topics. And it is this strong sense of morality that has led to a lot of people criticising smaller creators, in particular commentators, for their handling of this situation. It's just, I've seen a lot of punching down over the past month. In this situation though, I kind of do slightly agree with it. What a lot of people are taking issue with is the use of clickbait titles using the allegation that Carson is a paedophile to get views and then later on changing their minds. When you were talking about stuff like this, it's probably not best to accuse people of being outright rumours or paedophiles because there is always this slight chance that you have misinterpreted something or you have missed a key part of the allegation out. Now these smaller channels often use the defence of, well we need to do this to get in the algorithm. We're not lucky enough to have such a dedicated audience and whilst I sympathise with that as a smaller channel myself, you can make appealing titles without using such sweeping statements. <laughs> It is strange because a lot of people interpret paedophile and grooming to be a lot different from what the actual definitions are. Different sites have different definitions. Different countries have different definitions of what these things are depending on what the laws regarding this kind of thing is in that country. So it is very, very important that you're careful when you throw around words like that. The word paedophile in this situation has been used a lot and although I do agree that Carson's behaviour was weird, unnecessary, exploitive and can be read as manipulative regardless of whether it's intentional or not, as well as legally wrong, paedophilia is quite a broad statement, especially considering it is usually used to talk about older people preying on prepubescent kids, not 19 year olds talking to 17 year olds, and therefore having such a blanket title such as Call Me Carson is a pedo, which has now been changed by the channel in question. A lot of people are going to make a decision about this situation without knowing the full context, simply based off of that title. And yeah, you can make the argument that these people shouldn't judge a book by this cover, which has been another key defence of this person saying that bigger commentators shouldn't 
do that either. And it's not necessarily your fault if people come to an opinion without watching a whole video, but you still hold some responsibility if that is to happen because you chose to title your video in this way. I just want to say it doesn't have to be blatant paedophilia for it to be wrong. It doesn't have to be blatant grooming for it to be wrong. But with people actually calling Carson this with their whole chest, they are leaving themselves open to quite a lot of ridicule by its fan base. When you put something that is worse on the table and it turns out that that actually isn't the case, a lot of people are resolved with that and think, well, they're innocent from that thing. Therefore, they're innocent. I actually saw a tweet that I thought summarised this quite well in a response when I was looking at what people were saying about the situation. The big problem is that with headline terms, of pedo, once absolved of the major part, people play extremes and say only clear cut, innocent or guilty instead of actually underlying problems. It doesn't have to be the worst crime possible for it to be a crime. It doesn't have to be the worst situation possible for it to be bad. The it's not that bad mentality has already been applied to the age gap, for example. Even though most people that are actually talking about it are saying that the age gap isn't the problem. People are honing in on that one argument to derail the entire situation when nobody's actually arguing that. The problem is the fan to create a relationship and the legality of exchanging nudes. If you want to find the age gap problematic, that is fine. And if you want to dispute it, that is also fine. But treating it as if it is the major concern blindsights the actual legal problem. And that gives the defenders of Carson more leverage over those that are actually criticising him for what is actually definitely wrong in this situation. On the other side of things though, the large creators with platforms putting these small channels on blast could show them an ounce of sympathy. Let me reiterate that I do not agree with the way that they are titling their videos and as someone who is a commentary channel, I really, do, I really don't agree with it. However, I do to an extent understand where their reasoning is coming from. You could argue that it's problematic that people are only covering the situation for views, but realistically, that is what we all do on this platform. We do everything on this platform for views. Now that doesn't have to necessarily be a bad thing. For example, doing it for views can be so that information reaches as many people as possible. And it might not be your driving factor, but you're putting it on the platform for people to see. And clickbaiting content is going to make it so more people see the video and more people get the information and therefore you get more views. Now, I personally didn't really agree with clickbaiting titles. I didn't really agree with exaggerative titles. Is that even a word? I'm going to go out. I'm going to go and say it is a word. However, I quickly learned that is what you have to do to get in the algorithm. It is a tough game and I don't necessarily 100% agree with it but you gotta do it. However I do obviously acknowledge that there are times where people do go a bit too far like uh, blatantly calling people sweeping statements or saying that someone is definitely innocent or definitely guilty of things that are a bit more nuanced than that. You can have exaggerated titles without them being that exaggerated and that is the problem. Although like I said there are ways of pushing your content without clickbaiting not every commentary channel spawns in with a hundred Okay. Not every commentary channel has a community behind them that pushes them and not every commentary channel gets lucky with the algorithm, especially not on every video. It's easy to point out as well that those that have grown from boosts or got lucky may not actually remember what those situations were like. So obviously they're not going to consider that. They're not going to consider the reasoning behind titling videos in this way. But because of this existence of sometimes a moral high ground or an out of touch or just the failure to see reasoning behind someone's actions a lot of these channels when going in on smaller channels don't consider that whilst criticize them and those are two things that can mutually exist try to do it in this video <laughs> At least I attempted it. Sadly though, all in all, it is clickbaiting and clickbaiting gives not only the commentary community but the smaller commentary community and other communities on YouTube a bad name and a bad reputation but that is not something that's going to change anytime soon regardless of how many Twitter posts you make about it. But the main problem is, is an exaggerated stance or a poorly worded accusation. It's often enough to derail a situation such as this one. And although it is important that people do get called out for this kind of thing because it is definitely an issue I think the focus should actually be on the fact that Carson messed up here and needs to be held accountable for what he's done. Now you can speculate all you like about the situation of whether it was intentional exploitation, whether it was grooming or paedophilia, but the thing that is indisputable from the evidence is the fact that he did break a federal law and the fact that there was a fan to create a relationship that has been exploited. That should be the focus until more evidence comes to light. I watched a video from 2017 the other day when commentary was first becoming a big thing and a particular 
creator said, usually when drama escalates on the internet, bits and pieces of information get fed in and suddenly it becomes part of the narrative and that narrative doesn't get disputed so then when bigger creators come in and talk about it often these little pieces of false information can derail their arguments completely i'm gonna leave this video here if you did enjoy please leave a like and subscribe if you're new as well as turning on bell notifications these situations are becoming increasingly more and more popular it seems and uh we're only seven days in to 2021. I hope you're all staying safe, I hope you're all staying sane, and with that, I'll see you soon.